Hey, good evening. Uh, wonderful to spend a little time with you again. Here we are, made it to Saturday, August. I mean, Saturday, Wednesday, August the 5th. And so uh, let's open up as we always do with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for each occasion that we have to meet together. These occasions where we can come into your presence, perhaps rest a little bit from all of the things that are going on in the world, spend some time in your presence and spend some time in your word. And so pray that you might encourage us uh, throughout the time that we have together. Lord, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So what kind of things have been going on? Now, you know, it's been election time around the country. So uh, yesterday, everybody was jockeying for positions in power, and they're trying to get themselves all lined up for the uh, elections in November. And I want to talk with you a little bit about that. We often wonder, should we, we, be, should we be voting Republican or Democrat? My friends, no matter who gets into office, we have a responsibility. And I thought this was interesting. We're making our way through the book of Psalms, and we're going to be finding our way up to Psalm number 72. Now, in this Psalm, Solomon is asking for something. Asking for something that will help him govern the people. And I thought it would be good for us to start out by reading this, because each week we like to pray for our leaders, our president, our vice president, our governors, our mayors. We want them to be able to lead us in a way that will um, bring us peace. And so here's something that Solomon says that is something you should be praying for often for our leaders. So here's what he says. He goes, endow the king with your justice, O God. This is Psalm 72. The royal son with your righteousness so he can judge your people in righteousness. Judge your afflicted ones with justice. Then the mountains will bring, bring prosperity to the people. The hills, the fruit of the righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people. He'll save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. He'll be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days, the righteous will flourish. Prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. You like the sound of that? We want to be led by people that will help us, watch over us, that will defend the afflicted, that will save the children of the needy. One of the problems, I think, with our politicians today is they seem to be more concerned about themselves than about those whom they represent. So we should be praying that our politicians have wisdom and pray that they will do the job for which we voted them, which is to protect this great country, to watch over and protect us. There are so many things going on in this world. Um, leaders that have difficult decisions, if you've been watching uh, the news at all and saw that massive explosion in Lebanon and, and the devastation that occurred and, and the leadership there that has to figure out how did this happen and uh, try to figure out how to rescue people that still might be buried in the rubble. We need leaders who will do this for us, watch over us. Verse 12 of this, the king will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. The king would take pity on the weak and the needy, and he would rescue them from oppression and violence. That's what we need. We need protection. We need to make sure that this government of ours does what it's supposed to do, to give us the freedoms that we have and yet still protect us. And so what Solomon is asking for is the thing that we should be praying for our leaders to make sure that they do the things that will bring this country honor and glory and then, of course, benefit us. So let's do that right now. Let's pray for our leadership. Pray that they, like Solomon, might feel this way, that they want to govern in such a way that the, that the needy are protected, that children are watched over. Let's also pray for these folks around the world, especially these folks in Lebanon. That that explosion, if you you got to at least go to YouTube and watch the picture of it. It's just amazing how devastating that explosion looks. So let's pray for them, pray for our own leaders uh, as we kind of begin tonight. Father, thank you so much for the power of prayer. I love what Solomon had to say. He was asking for wisdom. He was asking for the ability to govern his people well. He wanted to protect the oppressed. He wanted to care for the needy. He wanted to make sure that the children were watched over. 
Lord, those are the kind of things that we want our politicians to do. When we elect them to office, we want them to watch out for this great country, to watch out for the people that they represent, to make sure that this country continues to have the freedoms that we have and that the people that are in it are protected. Right now, there seems to be some debate about that. I mean, there are cities that are looking at getting rid of the police. Father, I worry about those cities and the people that are in them. How will they be protected? And so elections uh, continue, especially as we move into November. We need your help. We need you to put into office the people who will do just what Solomon wanted to do. That they'll watch over the the great nation. Lord, we love the fact that we have the freedom to talk about you. And so, Lord, we need to make sure that people are elected into office that will keep those freedoms intact. We want to be able to talk about and tell the story of Jesus until the day the trumpet sounds. And so right now we pray for our leaders that are in office, our president, our vice president. Pray for our governors, our mayors. Lord, there are still decisions to be made about this COVID crisis, about workers who are still not back to work, businesses that might never return. And so, Lord, all of those require decisions, and so we just pray for them to have wisdom. We pray for Lebanon as they've gone through this horrible explosion. Many have lost their lives. People are still trapped in the rubble. We pray for them, and thank you for countries around the world who have risen up and said they donate money and send people to help uh, during this massive crisis. So, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for our leadership. And then, of course, we pray for the folks who are still trying to come up with a treatment plan for this COVID. Just pray, Lord, that you'll enable them to do what they need to do. And uh, we just, uh, Lord, leave these requests in your hands, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, how's your week been? I found something a little interesting this week that I wanted to start out with talking about today. Uh, I have a couple of cars that I drive, and one of them is a 1995 Ford Ranger. That's right, a 95 Ford Ranger, 25 years old. I was cleaning out my office today because I don't know how it is for you, but often I will lay something down, and then I put it in a safe spot, and then I can't find it. So I have a motorcycle I'm trying to sell, and I cannot find the title for it anywhere. Nowhere. I have searched up, down, in, out, baskets, bins, everywhere, can't find it. But there's going to be a benefit for you, because in the midst of this cleaning, I found a magazine from 1995, the same year as my truck. And what I found to be interesting is there's an article in there I want to read for you to kind of encourage you that even though things seem troubling out there, the truth is not much changes, at least not in the spiritual world. Maybe it changes in the real world. So I opened this magazine up, and back in 1995, you could join a book club. And I still have the card for you if you like it. I'm not sure the Crossings Book Club is in business anymore, but in those days, you could get three hardcover books for 99 cents. Man, pretty cool. And if that wasn't good enough, the center of the magazine, look at this. 10 CDs or 12 cassettes, one penny. Man, what a deal. Let's see, who are some of these artists on there? I don't even know. Stephen Curtis Chapman was still singing then. That's pretty good. Michael Card. That guy hasn't had an album out for quite a while. For him, I love those guys. Not sure they've had an album for a while either. Michael W. Smith, of course, he's still around today. But uh, that obviously has changed. I can't get that anymore. But in there was an article about something that doesn't change. And what doesn't change is our need to have an ongoing, vibrant relationship with God. And so the gal that wrote this article, the name of it is called Refreshment. And she begins by talking about an artesian well. And if you know what that is, an artesian well is something that is obviously in the ground. And sometimes when people are digging, maybe they're digging for a pond uh, or just digging around the house, if you hit an artesian well, the, the water just gushes forth. There's a pressure and a freshness, and the water just comes flowing. And she begins this article by talking about... Uh, the days when she lived in Alabama and 
near her house was one of these artesian wells. And she talks about how they could run all day and get all hot and sweaty, and yet they'd run to this well, and they would just, it was cold, and they'd drink from it, and they'd feel refreshed. So she began to use that idea of being refreshed and how desperately she needed it as a child and making the case that she desperately needs that kind of refreshment from God today. 1995 to the year 2020, and nothing has changed. We still need that same kind of refreshment today. So here's what she says. I'm just going to read a couple paragraphs from it, and I want you to see if any of it is still true today. So she says, maybe the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word worship is what happens in a church sanctuary on Sunday morning between 11 and 12. Or maybe you think of worship as something that people majored in long ago if they lived in a monastery and had plenty of solitude and free time. But worship is much more. It's a major theme of the scripture. Something God designed for our advantage because he knew it could make a difference for us. Imagine with me. What might happen if we worked worship into our schedules? If every day without fail, we stopped everything, found a quiet spot, opened our Bibles, and concentrated on God. If we read what he'd written to us, studied it, thought about it, applied it, wrote about it in a devotional notebook, memorized it, prayed about it, what might happen? For one thing, maybe we'd hear and see things about God we'd never heard or seen before. Maybe we'd stop doing all the talking to God and let him talk to us. Maybe we'd know more clearly what's really important for us to do. Maybe we'd carry calm back into our workplaces. Maybe we'd speak more softly to our children, not be quite so demanding of our spouses. Maybe we wouldn't have to work so hard at trying to find significance. Maybe. Worship is a lot like an artesian well. You come to it thirsty, you drink, and are renewed, strengthened. You can get on with life. The problem is we forget to drink. We forget worship. In our day, it seems we honor, respect, and show allegiance to everything but God. I thought that was kind of interesting in our day, 25 years ago. And just imagine how much busy we are now. In our day, it seems like we honor, respect, and show allegiance to everything but God. Mostly, we worship ourselves. It's nothing new. Israel had the same problem hundreds of years ago, and when Israel forgot worship, deterioration set in. The nation began to crumble spiritually, politically, and economically. Her people lost their balance because they lost their core, their center of worship. Wow. It happened to Israel. Obviously, it was a concern 25 years ago, and I think it's still a concern today. Worship is when we spend time in his presence. You know, it's kind of what we do tonight and, at, and every Wednesday night. We open up the Bible, we read about him, and we praise him. We worship him. I think she makes a great point that we have to pencil in time each day to just spend time with him. One of the things that we keep talking about every Wednesday is about how crazy the world is getting seems like each week there's some other disaster that happens or some other glimpse of the evil that's going on in the world. And the result of that is that we find ourselves getting upset, nervous, discouraged, depressed, whatever words you want to use. And yet the solution of it is the same as it was 25 years ago. Spend time in his presence and worship. Thank him for what he did in the past by sending Jesus to die for your sins. Thank him for what he's going to do in the future, because if your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life, it is written for all eternity. Take some time to just thank him for what he does for you now. 
the promises we've been reading about here in the book of Psalms about how he can be our refuge, that we can run to him for protection. But those things don't happen because we are so busy we forget to worship. So I encourage you in the week ahead and in the weeks ahead, you've got to spend some time with him. The unknown is still bubbling up. Even here in Michigan, we don't know what's going to happen in the fall. Uh, are the schools going to be open? Are kids going to have to be homeschooled? Is it going to be a, a three out of two? Nobody knows. Each week something changes. And parents are in a panic about what to do with their kids. One way to lessen the panic is worship. Spend some time in his presence. Let's do that right now. Let's just spend some time worshiping him. Thanking him for what he's done just asking him to do just what this lady suggested. Calm our hearts. Remind ourselves that he is in control. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this article. 25 years ago, somebody was concerned about the busyness of life and how it was creeping in on believers and causing them to not worship. They didn't have cell phones. They didn't have cable and internet and all these other choices that are consuming all of our time. And so the problems that they were looking at 25 years ago are even more pressing in the year 2020. But the solution that was suggested then is the same solution now, worship. Spend time with you to feel refreshed in a day and age that seems to want to just choke us out. Lord, I pray for folks that are watching today that maybe, maybe they understand that. They need an artesian well right now. They need to be refreshed in your presence. I know I need it myself. I was frustrated today. I can't find the title of that stupid bike. But when I come into your presence, I'm reminded that those things don't matter. What matters is reminding ourselves of what you've done for us in the past, what you're going to do for us in the future, and what you can do for us in the here and now. So, Lord, I just pray that you'll help us to find time, to spend time with you, to be refreshed. Lord, help us to do that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I mentioned that these things don't seem to change. That was 25 years ago. I want to remind you about something I read just week ago. This was Psalm 69. And in it, David was talking about his difficulties and the things that were going on with him. And he kept crying out to God. And in the midst of that crying out, he, he says this. He says, I am in pain and distress. He says, my Heart is broken. I'm looking for sympathy. And he talks about the fact that he, his throat feels parched. <laughs> I thought that was pretty interesting. Let me read it again here. This is verse 3 of Psalm 69. I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. David needed refreshment. 25 years ago, they needed refreshment. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you feel parched also. So spend some time in the Word and be encouraged. What's going on here at church? Just some things to kind of bring you up to speed on. Uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night is still uh, open to the public. I encourage you to come in. There's plenty of space for you to uh, come and worship with us and not feel like you're violating social distancing. Only had about 30 or 35 on a Sunday morning, so there's plenty of room to, uh, to spread out. Live streaming also with it. Each sermon is going to be posted online, and so even if you don't get there right at 11 o'clock, it will always be there for you. Wednesday night, just us together online. And so, uh, obviously, if you enjoy what you're hearing, share it and encourage others to uh, perhaps experience some of the refreshments that we're talking about. For our church family, we do have some things going on. Sunday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon is a celebration of life service for Lucy Wilson, longtime member here at the church, and uh, she passed away during the, the midst of the COVID crisis, and we could not have the kind of service that we wanted to have. So this Sunday 
at 3 o'clock, uh, we're going to meet together and just remember her, encourage the family, uh, and just spend some time together. And then later on in the month, on the 29th, and that's at 11 o'clock in the morning, that's going to be a celebration of life for Bill LeVere, another one of our church members, like uh, Lucy, had been a member here for many, many years, active, and the same thing, we're going to celebrate his life. Prayer request-wise, continue to pray for Ray and Tracy, that they'll be strengthened, Nancy Fisher and her treatments, and then Dale Beeler and his wife, JJ. We've been praying for them. They're down in Florida. Uh, she has some tumors that were malignant, and so she's been going in for some radiation. She seems to be sensitive to some of these treatments, so they've asked specifically that she'll handle whatever medicines it is that they give her and be able to handle that without... Uh, some of the reactions that we sometimes get for that. Uh, and so pray for her. I'm not sure, is it radiation or chemo that she's on? Maybe a combination of both, probably, both of them. So just pray for her as she's going for that. Tracy, we're just praying that they'll figure out the meds just right and that uh, she won't have any more of those seizures. Uh, when we get done, we're going to talk a little bit uh, good news. I'm going to pray for these folks first, but one piece of good news is, is just this. We started a GoFundMe page for Ray and Tracy to help them with some of their expenses. You know how it is when one of these situations rises up. Tracy had been healthy, never been to the hospital for anything, and then heart attack, stroke, seizures, the medical bills begin to pile up. And so we started a GoFundMe page. We asked for uh, $5,000. We thought that would help them with the, uh, the expenses that they needed. This is a small church, my friends. Uh, the average of 100 pre-COVID. I checked it yesterday, or late, earlier today, and it was up to 3800 and there was another gift that had come in. So we're at almost the $5,000 mark that we asked for. And so your generosity in helping people that are going through difficulties are, I mean, that's just page after page of good news. And so all of you that gave, all of you that have been praying for the family, thank you so much for that. Let's pray for them. Pray for our church family, of course. Uh, this COVID thing isn't gone. Uh, here in the South Line area, everybody's panicked because there's been some cases in the school district and uh, in one of the local um, places, uh, child centers for uh, watching over the kids. And so um, there's a little panic even in our area. So let's just pray that God will continue to protect us. Father, thank you for uh, the power of prayer. Thank you that we can come into your presence and ask you to do just that, to protect us. And so we pray for our church family. Now we know that there's been some resurgence right here in the South Lion area. We asked for help. We need a hedge of protection around this building and our church family. Uh, we don't want COVID to get in here. We want to be able to continue to serve you the way that you've opened up for us, this, this online world, which allows us to reach more people, to be able to talk about you. But Lord, we need protection. So our church family folks that help us put these things online for each one of those, Lord, we ask help. Ray and Tracy, thank you so much for all the people that have uh, given to help them with these expenses that they have, Lord. I just, I love our church family. And even some of the folks that are watching that I haven't had a chance to meet, thank you for joining in with us and helping. Friends of mine from around the country that donated, thank you so much. Continue to bless them, and, and Lord, help the doctors to know exactly what meds to give Tracy so that these seizures will stop. Uh, pray to this miracle for Ray. Lord, we don't, want, we, we don't want any kidney transplant. We want these kidneys to wake back up so that he doesn't have to do dialysis. Gary and Nancy, Lord, we want complete healing for her. No cancer. Cancer gone. Lord, we're asking this boldly. And everybody that's watching, I just ask that you pray the same thing. Nancy Fisher is a warrior for the cause of Jesus Christ. And we need her active and busy. So we need complete healing for her. And so join with me in praying that for her. And then for Dale, uh, Beeler and his wife, JJ, Lord, we just pray that the uh, doctors will know exactly what to do. This combination of chemo and radiation, we just pray that it will kill the cancer, but that she won't get any of the side effects that are a part of that. So watch over her. I know my wife Cheryl has some surgery coming up on Monday, shoulder replacement surgery. And of course, we're nervous about being in the hospital and COVID there. And so 
just pray, Lord, a hedge of protection around her also. Get her in and out quickly and then help her to rehab fast so that she can get back to uh, the busy life as we have it. So, Lord, we leave these things in your hands and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, but I have a piece of good news. Uh, I saw this one on uh, YouTube today, and I thought this was wonderful. I love that there are parents today that still want to raise their kids up with good principles. You might have seen it. Pre-COVID, you went to a store. I used to tell my church family about this all the time when Toys R Us was still in business. If you wanted to know what was really going on in the world, just go to a Toys R Us and watch the meltdowns that kids would have when their parents refused to buy them more than an entire cart full of toys. So there was a story on there uh, this week about a mom that... Uh, She's down in Georgia, and she overheard her son talking about some of his friends. He's 12, and he couldn't believe that some of his friends shopped at Walmart and Goodwill. He would never do that. Mom heard about it. I mean, heard him saying, she said, what are you talking about? And he's like, I, we, we wouldn't wear stuff like that. She could not believe that her child felt like that and really kind of passing judgment on his friends. So what did this mom do? She went to her son and said, you know, son, let's go to your, to your room. And he had some money there that he'd saved up. I don't know how he'd earned it. And she made him take $20 out of it. And she put him in the car and she took him to Goodwill. And she said, all next week, the only thing you're going to wear are the clothes that you buy here. Then she posted a picture of him. He was so angry as, she's, as they're walking through the store. He's carrying the clothes he's going to buy behind him, and they're dragging on the floor. <laughs> so she goes up to him and says, I'm going to tell you what. I don't care what you do. We're not washing those clothes. Those are the clothes you're buying, and you're going to wear them all week. <laughs> so she makes him buy the clothes. She posts the picture online, and it goes viral. I mean, thousands and thousands of people liking it and sharing it all around the country. And so my hat's off to you, Mom, uh, that was willing to teach your kids good things in a day and age when it seems like there are kids out in the world that didn't have parents that did that for them. Don't be afraid to tell your kids no. It's not going to kill them. Don't be afraid to teach them some good lessons because there's a lot of children out there that are growing up into adulthood and I believe they're not ready for it. And part of the reason they're not ready for it is that parents kind of abandoned their jobs. I mean, what this mom did, that took some backbone uh, to be able to stand up to the culture. The culture kind of feels entitled. Shopping at Walmart? <laughs> like, I got this nice fancy shirt on today, my friends. You know where I bought it at? Walmart. $4.97. Quite a value. The only thing I realized, though, is I can't wear shirts here without collars because I'm kind of clipped up weird. Can't have that, so somebody's got to remind me about that. I have to go there now and see if I can find a 497 polo. So kudos to that mom. Very impressed with her. All right. One or two more psalms, and then we will call it a day. This is Psalm 73. Uh, this is a great one. It's a good one for us today. This is written by Asaph. This is not a psalm of David, but in this psalm, the psalmist is shocked by what he sees around him. He learns something that we learn today. Did you know, my friends, that sometimes evildoers prosper? That's, that's shocking. How does that happen? How does it happen that the righteous sometimes toil away and toil away, and yet those who don't worship God... Those who live an evil lifestyle, they prosper. Well, that was, that was what was happening, sorry, with Asaph. And so he says this, he goes, uh, Psalm 73, verse 1, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from the burdens common to man. That's true. Believers, we have a foundation that we must follow. Truths, rules that God has put in place. Not so the evil. They're not plagued by human 
ills. Pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves in violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. The evil conceits of their minds know no limits. They scoff. They speak with malice. In their arrogance, they threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them, and they drink up waters in abundance. They say, how can God know? Does the Most High have knowledge? He couldn't believe what he saw, and you probably had that. One of the guys that I find the most amazing is a guy by the name of Bill Maher. He has a television show on HBO, and he really does not like Christians. He thinks we're crazy. And his show is popular. He has all the trappings of life. How does that happen? You might have observed something like that. And much like Asaph say, what's going on? And Asaph continues. He says, well, if that's true, then surely in vain I have kept my heart pure. In vain I have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I've been plagued. I seem like I feel like I've been punished every morning. He said, if I had spoken like this, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it was oppressive to me. You can't figure it out. Maybe you feel like that. The great part about this sound, though, is Asaph comes to his senses. How does it happen? Let's keep reading and see. Verse 17. I tried, well, verse 16. I tried to understand all this. It was oppressive to me till... I entered the sanctuary of God and I understood their final destiny. Surely you place them on slippery ground and you cast them down to ruin. How suddenly they'll be destroyed, completely swept away by your terrors. My friends, if you struggle with what goes on in the world, remember, without Christ... They are headed for an eternity in a place called hell. Don't be envious of them. Pray for them. Look for opportunities to tell them about what it is that gives you peace and joy and hope and purpose. I've experienced that a time or two in my life. That's why I love this psalm. I entered the sanctuary of God and I was reminded of their destiny. Lots of things for you to do this week. Lots of challenges. One, if you're envious of what's going on in the world, remind yourself what their end is. And if you feel parched, if it feels like things aren't going the way that you want them to go, it's time for some refreshment. How's that going to happen? Through worship. Worship spent in the presence of the king. Pencil in some time, not just this week, my friends. Pencil in some time each and every day. You've always needed it. It's just that our culture and the turmoil that's going on is a reminder of how much more you need it. Worship him this week. That's my challenge to you. Father, thank you so much for today. For this reminder that things don't change much. Maybe they change in the sense that we can't order CDs and cassette tapes anymore. But the struggle to find time with you is still the same. It was for David. It was 25 years ago, and it's still true today. And the solution hasn't changed. We need to spend time with you. Pray for everyone that's listening today. Help them to find a way to spend time with you, not each week, not each Sunday, but every day. Lord, we've always needed it, but now the crisis is reminding us how much we need it. Watch over and bless all the folks that are watching today, Lord. Help that this video gets out there and reminds people of how much we need to be in your presence. Till next time, we commit all these things and place them in your hands because we are overwhelmed. And we can't do anything about them, but you can. So we leave them in your hands today, Lord, praying in Jesus' name. Amen. See you Sunday morning at 11.